All right, it's safe to say our attention has turned to Washington and what's happening with the impeachment investigation of the president and specifically the role of Michigan's congressional delegation and what it's playing there. Say hello to our One Detroit contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson of American Black Journal. Hi, guys. But before we get to Washington, we got some good news, bad news going on here at home. Good news is the government is opening. The state government is, is still that functioning. Good news? Yeah, I don't. I, I guess news. I the bad, that point. The bad news is um, for for Republicans is that Governor Whitmer used her veto pen 147 times, and I think even the concerning news going forward is what is the relationship going to be like as they hash out this budget? Um, continue to do so together. Well, I don't know who's it's bad news for. We won't know that for a while. So we all see how this process works out, but it really is discouraging. Uh, the governor walked away from the negotiations three weeks ago, retreated to her office, started hurling insults at Republicans who continued, to their credit, to work with Democrats to get input on this budget. All of these 16, or most of these 16 budget bills had Democratic input. The education bit. bill was struck between Christine Gregg, the Democratic minority leader, and Lee Chatfield, absent the governor's input because she had left the process, and now she's turning to this obscure constitutional gimmick to bypass the legislature. I don't think it's ever, ever healthy to ignore the Constitution, separations of power, and basically take a dictatorial approach to government. And you're talking about the being able to the, 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 being able to shift funding and resources within departments, yeah, and that was tried by Governor Engler. He didn't do yeah, it. Though. I was going to say but, Engler was. <laughs> Engler was the last person to talk about doing that, so no one, no one on the Republican side was up in arms when he was talking about it. I mean, look, the legislature took the whole summer off uh, and didn't negotiate with the governor, which, which they shouldn't have done because they didn't get the budget done by Mackinac, which has been the pattern that uh, Governor Snyder established over eight years. If they had stayed all summer, how much more progress could have been made? Blaming Governor Whitner, Whitmer for, oh, for what she did in the last three weeks is kind of like... She did uh, nothing in the last three weeks. How would it have been any different? They got the budget they done by had, deadline but they, they without her input. But they got a budget done that she was not going to sign. No, and, because and, she wasn't part of the process. But the process could have unfolded over three months where they how were would have golfing. Been any different? And that's not her fault. And how, how would it have been any different? She left the table. They well, left before the, table. the day no, deadline. No, hold on, hold on. They, they left the, the table. The legislative leaders were still available to negotiate. The governor botched this from they the beginning. They put their and, chambers into recess mm -hmm. for the entire summer. But they were still there. They were, and they were still talks going on. When it came down to crunch time, she left the table. There's no forgiving that. I don't think she should and have left the table, but I also they think that they, over, were, they, were, they were putting she, her in a position Steve, where... She insisted they hung on, up over Rhodes. Well, yeah, they hung up over Rhodes, but she was in a... Her own caucus put her in an impossible position when Christine Gray said she, your 45 yeah. cent is that, is that a large, is is that a larger concern? So I think you here. do have to go back to the beginning where this 45 cent gas tax gets put on the table and doesn't have any support anywhere. I think that was a, a strategic error on her part, uh, and it you know it continued to have consequences all the way down the line. There is no there is no favor here though for Republicans who uh, who have taken a my way or the highway approach to almost all of these things that she's vetoing in the budget. I mean these were things that they could have worked out with her over the summer. Instead, they just passed what they wanted to pass and ignored her priorities. Which you know she's the governor. I mean she's part of the process. But you it, but if you got and priorities, did vote for her agenda too. Yes, well right. they did. But they voted for her, but there's no support for that gas tax. You, you look that at the was, polls. I think that was an error. I don't think you can ask the voters now. Did you vote for a forty-five cent gas tax? They'd say no. I think, it, but yeah. But like but, all good negotiations, though, could that have been the opening salvo of been. saying, "Then where do we kind of come to and, it from?" And it but was, to do that, but you have to sell the voters on it. You can't mm -hmm. ask. Or, or, the le or the legislature. Yeah, but you couldn't ask representatives who are the only ones who are going to face voters next year to take go out on a limb if you haven't sold it to the public or your own Democratic caucus. So I feel like I feel like if yeah. she had if she had put that together with Christine Gregg and Jim Ananick uh, and come out and said this is what we want to do, it right. would have been and received had the differently. From, right. From her party. That was a that was an error and that set the pattern for everything that happened over the summer. But again. 
Republicans left and didn't negotiate over the summer, which is the critical time, typically, if you don't get it done by Mackinac, to come to a Let deal. Let me ask Wouldn't you, though, the big, the big picture, though, and that's what you talk about, the dynamics and what the big picture of what we're going to be looking at for the next three years is is what? Well, well, she's, lost, yeah. she's lost two now showdowns uh, on critical issues. The no-fault insurance got taken out of her hands. Uh, now she's in a budget budget fight with the legislature using these extraordinary extreme powers to bypass the legislature and I think the constitutional process, I think if it goes to court again, she loses on this one. Uh, her skills at managing a divided government are very much in question. Yeah. What do you think? Last word on this before we shift. I don't think I put it in her lap. I think you've got a Republican legislature that's not used to the idea that they have to share power. They've had a complete power for eight years. Now they have a Democrat in the governor's office. You've got to negotiate. You've got to come to a compromise. They are unwilling to do it. You can't negotiate right, well, when there's nobody at the table. Well, they I were gone all summer. Last word, and no one ever listens. No one ever wants one in the last word. All right, speaking of a place that we can all agree on, let's head to Washington. Um, it's been uh, unbelievable to watch, I think, what's happening in the last in the last week or so. I don't want to debate whether the impeachment um, investigation should be going forward or not. I do want to look at the part that Michigan's congressional delegation is playing in on this and possible how vulnerable some members of Congress might be coming up in 2020 because of throwing their support back. And I am specifically looking at Alyssa Slotkin. Um, she's one of, Tough I think, uh, she's one of four um, people who are now being targeted. GOP, they're running ads against her um, in, in kind of looking, I guess, what this what this is going to mean for our local delegation, yeah, I mean, Stephen? Let me start with uh, you. She had a tough race coming up anyway because of the district that she's in, which was gerrymandered to favor Republicans uh, unfairly. Uh, same with uh, uh, Haley Stevens in the, in the 11th. Uh, these are these are mythical districts. They don't represent anything other than ideological id. Uh, and, and so she may pay a price uh, next year uh, for any number of things. I don't think she'll pay a price for this. If you look at what the polling, the early polling says on impeachment, majority of people think there should be an inquiry into this. It doesn't mean they think that the president should be impeached, but they think that there's enough here to say, let's look into this and figure out what happened. And that's all Democrats have said they want to do at this point. I mean, you've got some Democrats who've made it clear that they would impeach the president, but that's not the majority. The, the folks like Slotkin and Stevens, uh, these other uh, uh, sort of purple representative, purple district Democrats around the country, what they're saying is this rises to the level of an inquiry without question. And I don't think I don't think anybody uh, really is is uh, on the fence about that. What's the ripple effect on this? And all well, this? first. The polling is is not early. as clear. It's 47-47, right, according to Quinnipiac. So the country is divided and largely, that showed, that showed largely around um, the Republican-Democratic lines. I think it's it, uh, the impact on the swing districts depends largely on how this is conducted, you know, going out over the next few months. Uh, if it becomes evident, evidence that it's, it's a political... Uh, witch hunt, if you will, it's a political process. Uh, you know, I think you lose public support, particularly in those swing districts. I mean, voters are going to want to see whether the evidence is there. And right now, they're starting out with an unidentified whistleblower using secondhand information. They're, that's going to have to firm up. If this looks like a well, frivolous political process, and I don't think Rashida Tlaib helps with her impeached the MF. Uh, 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 T-shirts. I think well, that's voters are campaign. going, but I think voters are going to want to see that this is a serious, legitimate process. Right. Well, and but not I don't know. I don't know how you're going to convince people so of that, though. Got, I think you're going to be yeah. hanging at that. You've got to make a case. So first of all, first of all, Republicans are the last people to ever talk about impeachment and politics. I mean, they put the entire country through the most ridiculous impeachment process 20 years ago. And they paid that a was price. Not, hold on, that was not what price? They won the election in 2000. Uh, uh, they put the entire country through an impeachment process that was not about a state matter in any way. It was about a personal character flaw that voters knew about the president and re-elected him anyway. And we had months and months and months of testimony and all this other crap and them asking for him to resign over this matter. So, so they have no credibility on this point. Uh, the Democrats, on the other hand, are dealing with something that is a very serious state matter. Uh, 
and they're not relying on some hearsay uh, account by a whistleblower. There's a transcript of the call in which the president says there is this matter with Joe Biden and his son, and I'd like you to look into it. That alone uh, is a violation of his. It's a violation of his oath of office, and it's a violation of campaign finance laws. So that's well, worth looking into, right? Well, there. we can't They're going to have to prove whether, in terms of its impact on swing districts. They're going to have to prove it rises to a level of crime, not pro, not poor judgment. And I think that's where we are it's now. Not a, this is not a criminal proceeding. A lot it's depends. a political proceeding. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And you're going to have to sell voters on the fact that this is a legitimate process and not just another gotcha moment All by right. Democrats. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on because we're going to be able to talk about this now for the for the next year or so.